Aloha and welcome to another episode of Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. Uh, we've been on a break for a while, apologize, but we are back and ready to go. I'm your co-host Matt Johnson. Unfortunately, Justine is still on her summer vacation, but I believe she'll be back next week. We really don't know. But instead, we have a visiting co-host, Jasmine. Thank you once again for joining me and being the lovely co-host. Absolutely. And so the Hawaii Food and Farmer Series, what we're doing is we're bringing on the movers and shakers of Hawaii's food and agriculture industry, hearing their stories and also trying to figure out what's being done and what else can be done to make Hawaii more food sustainable. Uh, as always, you can join in the conversation through tweeting at thinktechhi, and you can also call in now. We have a hotline, and the number is right there shown on the screen, so please call in. We'd love to hear from you. And also, you can see the show later on YouTube at ThinkTechHI on YouTube channel. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our wonderful guests. So with us, we have Donna Shapiro, who is with the Mala, Mala Kalu'ulu Cooperative from the Big Island. And then we also have Kalani Franda uh -huh. with Kamehameha Schools. Aloha. She's going to be talking about the Mahaya Matcha. Aloha. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Great having you guys. Donna, I've known you for probably a couple of months now talking about Ulu. Okay. And so I'm uh, very excited to hear about your project. Um, before we get into that though, let's hear from Kalani just a little bit about Mahi Ai Matchup mm -hmm. and also the gala event that you have coming up on July 30th. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, we, uh, <clears throat> we've been doing this for several years so far. So the Mahi Ai Matchup Ag Business Con Contest, it's a venue to bring some of your best ag uh, farmers together, um, those that are entrepreneurs as well. And, and have them compete in a contest for some of Kamehameha School's best agricultural lands. And so we've been seeing some you know, amazing um, plans that have come forth, uh, passionate farmers, and excited to, to see those that have won. Um, and, you, and you're gonna get to uh, have a chance to talk with Donna about it. Gala's coming up on July 30th. Okay. We have, um, you're gonna have a chance to kind of uh, talk story with some of the farmers that have gone through um, this program and you'll also be able to, to see some of the pairing that's going to happen with the chefs that are there take some of the pro produce that comes from these okay. farms and then see some of the um, the two winners that come that won parcels in Pohoehoe and Punalu and they're competing for the first place and second place prizes okay so very excited to for July 30th to come around and uh, excited to have you as well as our keynote speaker. Thank you. Oh, right on. And so this is an event that's open to the public? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And so just to kind of like recap the Mahia matchup, so mm -hmm. it's a program put on by Kamehameha Schools, and this is going to be the third, yes, correct. third round, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so it's for farmers or aspiring farmers that have a business idea, a business plan. Either they want to start a new business or they want to grow their current business. Mm -hmm. And this basically what's at stake is access to some of uh, KS's agricultural lands on both Oahu and Big Island. That's correct. That's, that's phenomenal. And isn't there also some, like I guess not only is it access to the parcel, but isn't there a deferment of lease payment? Or what, what exactly are the So the about terms? five years worth. Um, I know Donna will, will talk about some of the experiences okay. that she's had with it as well. But it allows for us to kind of court each other so they'll go through and really work the land and malama it, okay. and then we'll work along with them. But we execute a, an agreement for about five years and then um, continue to nurture that. And as they would work on implementing the project that they put together and the business plan that they put together, we, our hope for both sides is, is to mutually agree upon something that's long-term that they can go through and continue on with the plan that they've uh, submitted to us. Wow. Yeah. That that's uh, we're going to need much more than just 30 minutes to be able to go through all this because um, i have so many questions that are stirring up in my mind and it's cool how you mentioned too it's like you know it's not just you and it's not i mean obviously chaos is a great thing that you guys are providing but it was interesting how you said how it's a courting process because also gives you an opportunity too to you know if things aren't working out or if it's not the type of uh i guess tenant that you want on the land there's a you know, relatively maybe easier way to kind of end that relationship, mm -hmm. but also it's more of a, you know, incubation instead of just, sure. you know, saying, okay, here's some land, go for it. Because as we all know, it takes a lot more to have a successful farming operation than just a piece of land, even though 
that is a huge piece. Mm -hmm. um, so, Don, why don't we switch over to you a little bit? Um, and, and I guess before you get into the Mahi Ai matchup, though, give us a little background on yourself and how you got into growing Wulu on the Kona side of the Big Island, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I was born and partially raised in Israel, actually, okay. quite far away. Um, I come from a kibbutz, which is like a socialist farming community. Oh, wow. Um, so it's cooperative both in its consumption and production. Mm -hmm. People live together and they farm cooperatively and they sell those products. They also have, and we had a factory as well. Um, and then internally, we share also in our food purchases and stuff like that. So it's a double co-op. Um, cool. And my family moved to the U.S. when I was a kid, and um, I moved back to Israel after college and did my master's there actually studying the cooperative economy in Israel wow. and how they've adapted over the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. Israel went through a massive economic recession in the 80s that shook up the cooperative sector and actually um, uh, kind of inspired a wave of privatization. Mm -hmm. But in the, the shakeout of that wave, you still have about 20% of the original co-ops that are still completely collective, huh. um, a very small number that are no, no longer cooperative at all, yeah. and a majority that are now this hybrid model oh. of kind of half privatized, half cooperative. Interesting. And it's a very, very interesting, very, um, in, in my mind, kind of a resilient, um, inspiring model for other parts of the world yeah. that are looking at how to build more resilient economies, especially in rural areas where clearly working together is needed, but how do we do that in a capitalist economy yeah. when the outside world is all you know, business oriented? Wow. Um, so that's kind of my background, and I came to Hawaii about six years ago uh, to work on a honey farm okay. on the Big Island, yeah. Volcano Island Honey Company. Oh, they make yeah. the white honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, great stuff. Um, and I got into breadfruit, obviously, after moving here. There's no breadfruit in no Israel. No breadfruit in Israel. <laughs> <laughs> Way too dry. Yeah. <laughs> Although I went back there last summer, and I told people what I was doing. They're like, breadfruit, we want breadfruit here. Can oh, we no grow way. it in the desert? Yeah, 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 and I was yeah. like, maybe in a greenhouse. Yeah, give it so. a shot. <laughs> <laughs> um. And so you're the second uh, cohort for Mahi this matchup, mm -hmm. and you were the winner last year. Mm -hmm. And so the program's been running for three years. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess, how does one, if they're interested in farming or gaining into this, how do they apply or what's the whole process to start? Well, um, I think we found out online, um, the application <coughs> process, if I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, is there's kind of a pre-application where it's a mini business plan. It's like maybe a five page uh, question and answer. You provide a business plan summary and uh, very basic financial projections mm -hmm. and then if you're selected into the semi-finalist round you have to come up with a full full business plan more detailed financial mm. projections and then if you make it to the next round then you're invited to present um, make a presentation mm -hmm. to the um, selection committee mm -hmm. which is the judges are both from Kamehameha schools and other organizations mm -hmm. um, and then and then you go to the gala, mm -hmm. and uh, basically at that point, you're assured that you'll get a parcel, but you don't know what place winner you're going to be. Correct. So the final placement oh, is actually okay. announced at the gala. Um, so it's a very, it's a fun event, but I remember it being nerve-wracking, because you're like eating dinner and eating dessert, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> they announce the winners, and then... Oh, they wait until, <laughs> yeah. like they wait until the, the very end. end. Oh, that's <laughs> 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 You know, the exciting thing about that is really you're able to see um, an array of, mm. of proposals, many different types of thoughts that went into it. Mm. And so everything from um, ulu to apples to citrus, mm. and I've even seen kalamungai or mungai. Oh, okay. And so coming out and seeing how you um, create some kind of value-added product with it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's really interesting to kind of see the, the opportunities that come out of there. Um, and, and so for some people, they'll not only provide kind of your, your mini uh, business plan, but some of them will put in their marketing plan, history about the area, so they do a lot of research. So they even go above and beyond what's yes. required with the application process. Of course, that helps the screening committee. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and add some value to those that have invested that kind of time. Like the open source nature of yes. it all. Yeah. Um, it, you know, so this year what we did was we wanted to really go out and to various parts of the community to let them know that we're putting on this for the third time. Mm. And so we went to farmer's markets, we went to 
um, different organizations that promoted agriculture, mm -hmm. and just should, you know asked them for some time, shared about shared about the uh, success of the past two years, and encouraged those to kind of get involved. So we had sixty applicants this year. Wow, That's fantastic! And unfortunately, we only awarded two parcels. Okay. So, um, so how, what's the growth from the previous year, from the second cohort? So the first year, it was very huge, a oh, lot fantastic. of people. I want to say about a hundred, I think. Oh, wow. Yes, and we had three, I believe it was three parcels. Um, second year, I think they got a little tired. Mm. Just there's a lot of work that went yeah, into absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, especially by the contestants. So we wanted to encourage those that put in, um, you know, that tried the first year, yeah. encourage them for the second them. year. And so we actually seen a couple of them that tried first year and second year and third year. Okay. Um, That's great. But, but we wanted to kind of build up that excitement again. Mm. And so we did that uh, this year. Um, and was, was very excited to see the, the number of applicants that came through and the quality of it as well. Mm. Uh, we do have also another, uh, actually both of them are dabbling, have Ulu as kind of their primary uh, crop. Oh, that's oh so the, the winners from uh, this year's cohort. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So some of them have that as a primary and secondary, they'll have cassava and some other stuff. Okay. Ulu's yeah. trending. It is. <laughs> yes. That's fantastic. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. How many applicants do you see from the UH Ag program? Is that something that you guys participate in, or it is? Yeah. And so we actually, um, that, you know, that plays a big part in the qualifications because they've gone through a process, they've received level of education. So not only from the from the undergraduate or graduate programs, but something involving their hands-on type of. Yeah. And so Go Farm does a great job in that. Mm -hmm. um, so we've seen a, a number of them that have applied. We've also seen a number of them that have applied from CTAR, so from UH's Ag program. Okay. Um, and one of the exciting things that we did this year was we wanted to partner with Go Farm a little bit more. Mm. And so we partnered in with them. They were looking at um, awarding some type of opportunity for Native Hawaiian um, students that have gone through their exposure program and getting more involved with their Go Farm program, mm. and um, in awarding five uh, recipients. Um, located on Kauai, Maui, and two, or actually four recipients, and two from Oahu. So we partnered with them to do that. No, that's great to hear how you guys are like partnering up with these different programs, mm -hmm. you know, the GoFarm program, and then, like I was saying kind of before, where there is uh, access to land, which is huge, but then there's so many other pieces. So it's great to see that you're kind of combining forces and trying to have that complete package so that everyone has you know, a much better chance of being successful. Um, so we're definitely going to talk more about that. And we also want to hear more about your project in Kona uh, right after we come back from the break. Okay, we'll be Hi, my name is Aaron Wills. You are watching thinktechhawaii.com. I am the host of the show Rehabilitation Coming Soon. You can catch us live on thinktechhawaii.com at 11 a.m. on Tuesdays. I will see you there. Hi, I'm Ray Starling, and I am co-host for Hawaii's Wednesday afternoon, State of Clean Energy. And with me today is Leslie Cole Brooks, and she's going to tell you what's happening this month with our shows. Hi, everybody. I'm Leslie Cole Brooks, the Executive Director of the Distributed Energy Resources Council. And this month, is the focus is on distributed energy resources. We just had a great show on smart grid technologies, and the rest of the month, we're going to discuss storage, different strategies, microgrids, and then we're going to have live man and woman on the street from Verge. So it's really exciting, very informative, um, lively, and just worth doing. So see you next Wednesday. Thank Hello, ha! How you doing there, lassies and laddies? This is Angus McTech here on Think Tech Hawaii, and I have my favorite show, Hibachi Talk with my good old buddies, Gordo the Texada and Andrew the security guy. Please join us every Monday. No, it's Friday. Every Friday from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii. And you can also find us on YouTube, Hibachi Talk. Aloha. Aloha and we're welcome back again to Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I'm your co-host, Matt Johnson, with Jasmine here today. And we are talking to Donna Shapiro. Uh, from Ala Kalaulu Cooperative, and also talking to Kalani Franda with uh, Kamehameha Schools. And so we're talking about the Mahiai Matchup uh, Gala event, which is going to be happening on July 30th. And so we're just going to get a little background on how the program works, 
connecting with farmers and aspiring farmers uh, to Kamehameha Schools um, agricultural lands. Mm -hmm. And one thing I want to make sure we have plenty of time to do those. So Donna, you were um, uh, the recipient and the winner last year. Mm -hmm. So I want to hear a little bit more about the cooperative because you, you got us all excited talking mm -hmm. about your experience with cooperatives. Uh, and what was the, um, was it a, a, a Yiddish word that you said? No, it's, well, it's a Hebrew word, Hebrew kibbutz. Word. Kibbutz. Yeah. Yeah, so are you, like, bringing kibbutz to the big island? Is that what? I mean, not the kibbutz model as a whole, but I think some of the things that worked from it, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about, like, what you're doing with that and with Ulu on the big island? Sure. So Malakalu Ulu is a worker co-op. Um, basically, the owners are also workers on the farm. We started out with three members when we applied for the Mahi Ai matchup, and we've grown to five. Oh, cool. um, so we've made some progress on that front. Um, and the idea, actually, because we received um, startup capital from the Pauahi Foundation as part of our award, instead of buying into the business with money, we're buying in with sweat equity. Mm. Okay. So each of us is making a $4,000 contribution through our work before we are full owners of the business. Okay. And then basically once we've made that amount of work investment, then we're a full owner and entitled to profit sharing. Wow. Um, and that's really incentivized us to work the land, which is what the, the land needed. Mm -hmm. um, so our project plan is about restoring the traditional Hawaiian agriculture system that existed mm -hmm. in the exact spot where the farm is located. And that was actually our um, incentive for applying is when we saw that particular parcel available, it was within the traditional Kalu'ulu, which okay. we you know, were aware of and thought was an amazing, brilliant system. And so we wanted to do that. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so we actually visited the farm. We saw remnant breadfruit trees and noni trees and a bunch of the other canoe crops, kukui. Um, you know, there's even a kawaya. There's some native, native crops. Um, and so that's our project. We're restoring the traditional system. We're on a four-acre plot, and the, uh, the highest acre is, the most Malka acre is a pure restoration zone. Okay. So that means no outside inputs of pesticides, fertilizer, even irrigation. Oh, wow. We're really trying to replicate what the Hawaiians did and how they did it. And then the lower three acres is what we're calling, what we're calling an adapted Kalu'ulu. So it's based on the concept of the traditional one, mm -hmm. but with more of a mix of crops, some Polynesian crops that weren't brought to Hawaii, and some non-Polynesian crops, and then the application of outside inputs as needed on an as-needed basis. Um, so that's our project in a nutshell. Um, the Kalu'ulu system was an agroforest mm -hmm. with breadfruit as the primary canopy crop, mm -hmm. um, mixed with kukui and ohia ai, mountain apple. And then the understory was basically all the other canoe crops mm -hmm. um, and native crops too, like mamaki tea. Um, so our two commercial crops are ulu and olena turmeric. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And obviously this ties in really well with Kamehameha <coughs> Schools and, and, and your mission, um, you know, tying in with a project like this and also the significance of, of ulu being a, a canoe crop. And, and there's, like we were saying before too, there's been a lot of other interests as well, other groups that are really looking into growing ulu, but also we have, you know, just the raw ulu, which you can sell at the market. But one of the other things you guys are doing, too, is looking at the value-added mm -hmm. products with ulu. You want to talk a little bit about that? Sure, yeah. So we started marketing ulu pretty much as soon as we got the parcel because there were about a dozen mature trees on the property. So we had supply. Um, and once we started marketing it, we realized, as I guess anyone does who has ulu, the season is, ver is variable and it's short. Yeah. We get two to three seasons a year, but they only last for a month or two each. Okay. So to maintain any serious markets and to really develop the market in general, you need a year-round supply mm -hmm. and you need a way to make it more shelf-stable because once picked, mm -hmm. it ripens really, really mm -hmm. quick. So we started processing, and what we do is a very basic steaming um, and freezing process. So it's ready to go, it can last in the freezer for six months, in the fridge for a month, and um, it cuts out all the waste and all the prep time for kitchen staff, whether they're you know, at a school or a restaurant or at home cooking for a family. So we started making that product, and again ran into volume shortages mm. where we started supplying people and they wanted more than we could provide. Yeah. So over the last few months we've actually been working with other ulu farmers all around Hawaii Island mm. to aggregate our crop, mm. um, process it together and market it together. So we're creating a second co-op, a secondary co-op yeah. if you will, 
um, and we're finding that to be really, really great. Um, you know, the farmers get profit sharing, they get a market for their crop, mm -hmm. which at this point, there still is that lack of consumer education and interest in ulu, mm -hmm. where it's still not the easiest thing to sell. Mm -hmm. um, so by working together, we can really get those larger accounts and start to develop the market. And so now talking about the educational part of it, because I mean, that obviously, I mean, there's people who I guess are, if you're already in the, the, the Ulu train wagon or whatnot, I mean, people love it, but then there's also a lot of people that just aren't familiar with it. What kind of things are you doing or what, like one of the things, I guess you were at the, the food expo mm -hmm. uh, this week at Blaisdell. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so the um, I think it's the Hawaii Lodging and Food Service Expo happens once a year, and it's targeting um, food service professionals in hotels and restaurants and basically everybody yeah. um, in food service in the state. So that's been the first time we've gone out there and presented our product, like in an exhibit or an expo right. format. And we've gotten great feedback. Um, I have to say there is a very small percentage of people that walk by and they're like, what's that? Oh, breadfruit. Oh, I hate breadfruit. And they <laughs> walk away without even trying it. Um, but for the most part, people are excited. Did somebody actually, did anyone yeah, actually do that? like two or three wow. <laughs> out of like several hundred. Okay. So small, well, small just, percentage. Yeah, get rid of those people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <who laughs> they're not them? invited. <laughs> but uh, yeah, everyone else has been... Um, positive and uh, quite a few people have tasted breadfruit for the very first time oh, wow. over the last few days. So it's been fun to expose them. Yeah. We have been presenting two varieties, Hawaiian Ulu and Ma'afala, which is a Samoan variety, which are very different, mm -hmm. and also three maturity stages. So breadfruit is an amazing crop, but one of the most amazing things, in my opinion, is that it can be eaten at every stage of its development, okay. from basically you know a month-old teeny tiny spiky fruit on the tree to a four-month-old totally mature and, and softening ripe fruit. Yeah. And at every stage, it has completely different taste and texture. Mm. So the Mature stuff, the young stuff, um, has an artichokey flavor. Mm. It's like a vegetable. You can pickle it. You can use it in salads and okay. in stir fries. As it matures, it becomes starchier, so a potato-y consistency. And then as it ripens, it sweetens. It's like a super tropical sweet potato, even a banana when it gets really ripe. Mm. So we've been, you know, actually having samples, and people are tasting, and they're just wowed by this versatile fruit. Um, so that's that's been really fun, and I think ultimately that's what it takes. There there have been groups that have done a great job with education already. So we're just you know doing our small part. Right on, and it, so it's interesting. So you're talking about the different um, stages of of breadfruit, but that's also must be challenging for you trying to figure out how do you market that because you're just kind of getting started. So are you thinking that you're going to maybe eventually have different products? At, mm -hmm. from different stages of the maturity of the crop or, or how what are you what are you thinking around that yeah we actually are already going to launch all the different products oh, okay <laughs> so we're about to launch our first retail product yeah. the brand name is ulu la which means ulu time okay it's also <laughs> kind of ulu la, la. <laughs> so add a little zing to it yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And so our, we have a generic label that says steamed breadfruit, um, okay. and then we're going to add basically variety and stage stickers to okay. make it a little easier for now. In the future, we'd like to certainly have you know, custom packaging for each different kind, but yeah. since we're just getting started, we're going to make it easy on ourselves and buy some stickers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and start off that way. Um, and then for wholesale markets, restaurants and you know, schools and stuff, they can basically um, tell us their preference and we can supply any of the maturity stages to okay. them. Do you see a preference kind of emerging for a particular stage? That's a great question because um, all the uh, kind of consumer and marketing literature that's been published says the largest market is for the mature starchy fruit. Mm. And that hasn't really been what we found over the last couple of days. So once people taste the immature stuff, um, they love it. They're like, wow, it is artichokey, you know? <laughs> They're so surprised. Um, so that's been a surprise. We thought that was going to be a super niche market, mm -hmm. and we're seeing that it might not be so small after all. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the ripe stuff, I think, you know, people like sweet. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we don't sell the super ripe mushy. Mm -hmm. We sell it when it just starts to ripen. And at that stage, it's absolutely delicious. Yeah. I mean, it's like a sweet potato in texture, but then it's kind of pineapple-y, kind mm -hmm. of banana-y. Yeah. So very special. Um, I think that the mature stuff is still going to have maybe the m most versatility for chefs because you can fry it, you can mash it, you can make hash and mm -hmm. on that level. Mm -hmm. But I think that all three of them are going to be popular. 
So for someone like me, just wanting to go in and buy this, like where can I go and get it right now? <coughs> um, so we haven't launched yet. We're just finalizing our label. Okay. But over the next couple months, you can expect to see us in farmer's markets mm -hmm. around Oahu and Hawaii Island, and um, hopefully in retail stores too. So we've been starting to talk to grocery stores. Um, so yeah, and we are online at eatbreadfruit.com. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know exactly where to find us, as soon as we launch, we'll have a list of retailers. Eatbreadfruit.com. Fantastic. Yeah. So you have probably cooked with breadfruit quite a bit at this point. Is there like a go-to dish for you? Uh, my husband and I each have our own things that we do. <laughs> so he, his preference is patties. Okay. So you can just steam it, okay. and you can even store it in the freezer. You can steam a whole bunch and throw it in the freezer. That's kind of what we're selling. Mm -hmm. um, but then once you defrost it, um, you can re-steam it, so just soften it up again, and then you mash it up with onions and spices and oh, wow. anything else. I mean, you can throw in corned beef, or you can throw in mushrooms at that yeah, stage, yeah, yeah. and then you pan fry it in some nice hot oil. It's like the best veggie burger you'll ever have. Yeah. Protein also has um, quite a, a good amount of protein. Okay. Uh, Ulu has quite a bit yeah, amount of protein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as a vegan or a vegetarian food, it's super healthy. Um, it is really the next super food up and coming. Uh, my preference is probably more of like a, an Ulu salad, just okay. because it's so mm. easy and you can put anything else in it. Mm. You know, you can do it kind of creamy with avocado, mm. or you can do it more Asian style with shoyu and sesame oil. Yeah. And I think that's always been one of the challenges with Ulu is, like you said, is the, the short shelf life that it has. And so it's great that you guys are kind of thinking ahead, like, one, first got to, like, stabilize it, so you're going ahead and you're, you're freezing it, and then you have, you know, a product that can then be sold to chefs and restaurants. Um, and one of the things that people are also look into is with um, uh, flour, Ulu flour. Do you think that's something that's going to be possible? I think once the volume increases, yes. But until the volume of what's produced here does increase significantly, the economics of flour are really tough because you lose about um, 70 to 80 percent of the volume. So with the steam product, you're only losing um, 20, 25 percent. So that's the difference. So, Kalei, are we going to have Ulu at the uh, Mahia Matchup Gala? Mm. I believe we are. And I wanted to say, I think I, I'm pretty sure that you've been talking with some of the Ulu farmers here on Oahu. I, I believe one of them is is our winner in Punalu as well. Oh, okay. So um, you know, really need to see the network of Ulu farmers coming together and really see how important it is to build that um, that camaraderie and looking at um, how do you come together as a as a co-op and and meet the needs of, of all the desires that the public's looking for. Mm. Great. And one quick tie-in is that we're going to be also selling and um, piloting our process product at the Mahi, Mahi Eye Matchup Gala. Yes. So if you want to get some and be the first to see it, we're going to be um, having it there available for sale. Oh, wow. And that's your great, product. Great yeah. plug. <laughs> so that's a perfect way. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. Thank you so much for coming on to this show and very excited to hear about the matchup coming up and also the new product lines that are happening and definitely hoping. I know you brought me uh, a sample, so I'm looking forward to, to trying that. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thanks again, Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. We're here every Thursday afternoon at 4 p.m. Aloha.